years, like I should have had all these surgeries. Like six years, I've had four surgeries and 35 fibroids removed. Hey guys, it is Christy K and I am back with a video, but today it is something completely different. This is just something that I have been going through that I have finally decided to share because I feel like I am not the only person going through this. So in 2017, well, let me back up. So I'm 5'2", I've always been very petite. You know, I'm kind of athletic build, uh, eat pretty healthy, work out a lot. Well, I used to, now I'm like, mm. Like never really gained no weight, but like all of a sudden I started getting weight. I started getting like looking like bloated. I started looking pregnant and to the point where my dad goes, you know, my friends asked me if you're pregnant. Really? I think that he wanted to ask me, but didn't know how, right? But anyway, so just giving you that backstory. So I go to the East Coast because I'm on the West Coast. If I go and it's a big weather change immediately, I get really sick. So I got real sick, like my allergies was bad. Like I couldn't even breathe. Like. So I went to the doctor, but when I was there, I was like, hey, you know what? I've also been having some really insanely heavy periods on top of this and I'm gaining a lot of weight. Can we just uh, take a look, give me an ultrasound and check out what's going on in there. Turns out I had uterine fibroids. So I was diagnosed with uterine fibroids and when I found out I had the option to have them removed, surgically removed and open myomectomy because the biggest one was the size of a tennis ball insert photo right here the doctor took this uh, when he took them out because they take them out they take a picture so that we could see them but they also test them to make sure that they're not cancerous so the big one was the size of a tennis ball so it had to be the myomectomy open method like where they cut me open like a c-section and for me not having any children i was actually very insecure about that and when i got my surgery people were like were you sure you want to have it because what if they come back they could come back and me i'm like i'll take my chances not knowing that they was not done with me they was gonna keep on coming so then maybe two years later i'm like something's not right my period's getting kind of heavy again like and i the doctor who did my first procedure he was cool but what i've learned is that male like OBGYNs, it's not the same as having a woman ob like they don't have the same body the same feelings like they just don't understand certain things and i felt like he sent me home with some motrin after you didn't cut open my stomach cut open my abdomen cut my uterus all up and uh, gave me some motrin it was like no that's okay that's okay you'll be fine i was not fine like recovery on that was tough it was so tough so in 2019, I found this great doctor, a researcher. She was an OB and a surgeon. And I'm at the age where I want to think about having kids anyway. So I'm like, this is perfect. Two in one, I can just keep her for the rest of my journey, right? And I told her what was happening and she's like, okay, well, yeah, let's get you an ultrasound. Got me an ultrasound and she told me that they were back. And there was three of them. And she said, okay, we can remove them, but your options are a little bit different now because these were not as big as my other ones. So she was able to go up laparoscopically, I wanna say it's called. And kind of like burn them out and i'm gonna enter like some pictures right there like it's kind of hard to tell what's what she kind of burned them out but i had the pictures that they took with the scope in there and this is 2019 so i'm like all right cool cool going about life and mind you what i failed to mention is i'm gonna find pictures from like 2017 like like the changes because like after i had got my fibers removed snapback came back body came back feeling like me because i was like literally wearing layers and i'm typically like happy with the results that i have with myself so you know i'm a little bit more showy like don't let it be crop top season because i'm there and so that happened and then you know with those i kind of gained like a little bit of weight but the first time i got up to 165 pounds and then 2021 there's some weirdness happening. I give my doctor a call and I was like, hey, you know, it's been a little bit over a year. I think we're back where we started. And she goes, all right, I'll send you for an ultrasound. You know your body, but you know you're of a certain age and there's things that you got to think about, like your fertility. Do you still want to have kids? Like, what do you want to do? Do you want to keep them? You know, if you get pregnant with them, there's a chance that you'll miscarry because they will take, you know, everything away from the baby that you need. So like, what do you want to do? Crap, like I was... I cried. I was at work when I got to call. I cried because I was just like, why does this keep happening to me? Like, this is just 
it so much like they told me they would come back but like i didn't know you know it was gonna be like that so i had another procedure and she removed it was like two or three of them so whatever the total was at 2021 20, now we up to 11 okay and then after that she removed them it was easy it was laparoscopic again they went up through my vagina so no more no more scars because i have had friends who've had procedures and they made like holes like five or six little holes in their stomachs to take them out and i was like i don't need no more scars i was already very self-conscious as a woman with a c-section scar and no children like it's just for me it's hard to explain like when you get to a place or a moment with somebody and they're like i thought you said you didn't have any kids and i'm like i didn't and i have to explain what's going on that was tough for me so then everything is good and it's almost like two years time went by because i left the job i was at i didn't have the same insurance that i have and insurance is insanely expensive and i started working for like a smaller company versus the big corporation i was working for before so like the insurance that i had wasn't going to get it and i wasn't going to be able to see my doctor but i had got an ultrasound and i found out that i had them and i was like mm -mm. so i had to switch it up pay a whole lot more money and i got to my doctor and my ultrasound said that actually this is 2022 my ultrasound yeah it hadn't even been a whole year and a half august of 2022 my ultrasound said i had 10 and it said plus meaning like maybe a few more this so my prayer got scheduled rescheduled five different times i didn't have my procedure until april 14th of this year and three nurses and i was at ucla and i was really excited because there was one guy but it was mostly a team of women my ob is a woman and like the nurses like the surgeons like all these people were all women and i was like i just love me some some girl power and just women thriving so i was very excited about that but i was like wow didn't know i needed all these people typically a myomectomy procedure is two to three hours mine was five and when i woke up she was like everything went well and you actually had quite a few i had 23 fibroids that they removed okay so when i finally got to my doctor and she wanted to schedule the procedure she told me like listen i know you want children i know you don't have them she was like i'm gonna remove everything doctors typically remove like the ones that get probably once they're about this size they'll start removing them because they feel like the little ones don't do them but she was like you had some little teeny tiny ones last time and she was like they've just kind of exploded so we are we're gonna open you up and we're gonna take everything out and then she was like but now it's gonna get real she's like i'm gonna email you some stuff it's time to think about are you gonna freeze your eggs or are you gonna have a baby at this time i was single single and i don't know where y'all live at but the dating pool out here got pee pee in it like i bawled my eyes out in the doctor's office because i was like i'm a single these men are trash like it is so hard to find like a decent guy not playing games and like I'm like i don't know like there's no one there's nobody like i was just i was honestly like depressed and i'm like and freezing your eggs is so expensive then i found out once you freeze your eggs you have to pay for storage so it's like i'm gonna be storing these things until i find somebody but then it's like what if i'm too old when i find somebody like am i gonna have somebody else carry them like i don't want to do ivf like I was just kind of like distraught so when she told me that they removed 23 i was like well damn and she's like yeah you had quite a few in there she was like we had to kind of move some things around she's like you actually had 23 but where the one was it wasn't easy to get to and we opted to leave it in there but she's like we gave you a window so you got to figure out what you want to do she's like if you want to have a kid not three to six months to figure it out but i have to wait three to six months to get pregnant so that i can heal but then i also can't wait too long because i don't want them to come back and if they come back and i happen to get pregnant and i had a friend actually who had a pregnancy and she had one and the fibroid one because it takes everything that your baby needs and i'm just like oh my god stressful so hopefully i still got some eggs left and this is two weeks post-surgery i'm two weeks post-surgery i had to wait until i was like up and ready like i'm still healing i got another four weeks to go but you know like i have my moments where i feel fine i was here because i wanted to share because i feel like a lot of women go through this i feel like it is but i can't do too much because i get tired and i'm still healing but predominant mostly in the african-american community they really can't tell us why although they they credit like you perm your hair all those chemicals processing through your scalp you know cause those because essentially what they are are non-cancerous tumors 
in your stomach and uh, after being in the shop every week like after priming my hair for 10 years straight that's when they started to appear and then that's when they never left and I think in 2019 I stopped perming my hair as a whole because that's a whole nother ordeal every all my hair fell out and then that's when I figured out the connection to that so I decided to go natural which is why I be doing natural hair videos I'm on that journey now just growing my hair out and it's been a struggle because I started doing it and then I was like this is too hard and I went back to the creamy crack but then I was like no no, no you gotta do it so I am Oh my god, June will be three years since I big shopped. So there will be a big shop update coming up. But yeah, I just, like I said, I wanted to share my story because I know I'm not the only one going through this. Like at this point, you guys, I have had 35 fibroids removed and that is insane. That's absolutely insane, but it is what it is. I gotta take care of myself. Like I'm blessed to, you know, been able to afford the insurance for stuff like because I could not have or I could have just had another doctor. It's so important that when you get your ultrasound that you ask them like how many big ones and you ask them how many little ones and if they can please have them take them all out because it'll make life so much easier. It's, they might come back you might be like me like there is no reason that in six years like I should have had all these surgeries like six years I've had four surgeries and 35 fibroids removed that will definitely prolong it and give you some time if you're someone like me but and also if you guys want to be on my journey with me and trying to have a baby and me if i get pregnant give me a thumbs up comment down below and i will share um, because even that's gonna be a journey like i'm um, like i said i am of a certain age life don't crack so i don't look as old as i am but i am not no spring chicken no more so it's gonna be hard like i may miscarry like I mean, I hope not, but like it's not going to be an easy journey. So if you guys want to follow that journey, definitely let me know. This time around, I got up back to 165 pounds. Which, and I not as big as I was last time. Like, I don't know, I guess I carried my weight differently this time. But, but because my weight fluctuates when I go through this, it's like I get the, oh, you're eating too much. You're doing too much of that. Like so many people speaking to me. Again, thank you so much for watching and talking to me about things that they don't know about. And like, <laughs> that's crazy. And that's hard to deal with too. Like the scrutiny in your body. Like for me, none of my clothes was really fitting. Like everything I had to wear was stretchy. Like... And you know, I'm kind of a little thing, so it don't take much for me to look like a little Oompa Loompa. <laughs> but now I'm just on the process and the journey of like getting back to myself. Share with me if you are going through this and trying to decide like what to do. I just felt like this is a conversation that's not had enough. Like so many people deal with this in silence. I've been dealing with mine in silence for the longest, but I just felt like it was time to share. So like I said, thank you guys so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up if this video was helpful, if you like this video, if you want to see more content related to my journey. Also, if you're just one of my regular watchers, give me a thumbs up if you want more content from me, if you want some more hair videos, some more makeup videos. You can always comment down below and let me know what type you want from me. You got to let me know what y'all like. And until then, I'll see you guys in my next video. Mwah.